Now, we saw the effect of having an alkyl group on a benzene ring and how that affected the reactivity. It turns out there can be other substituents on a ring other than just alkyl groups. So there's two basic categories. Um, the first are electron donating groups. So these increase the electron density of neighboring atoms. So here's your substituent, and your substituent will be an alkyl group. It'll be a substituent that has a lone pair on it, or a substituent that has a negative charge on it, like an oxygen with a minus charge, like phenoxide. Right? So it turns out that these sites here are gonna be your nucleophilic sites. So because of that, sometimes we say that they're activated at ortho and para. And because of that, we'll say that they are OP directors. Now, the other type of substituent is an electron withdrawing group. So these decrease electron density of the neighboring atoms. So these either have a, as a substituent, they either have a full positive charge or a delta plus charge. So we saw one example of an atom that has a full plus charge. Do you remember the nitrogen of the nitro group? That's another example. Um, now, this is going to decrease electron density at ortho and para, which essentially means that you're deactivated here. And deactivated overall because, remember, the benzene's double bonds are acting as a nucleophile. So if you're pulling electron density away, then you're making the nucleophile weaker. Um, so they're deactivated, and we say that they're meta-directing. So we see substituents happening right there. right? So that's where we're going to see our substitution. Now, these can have different effects on reactivity. There's two ways that these substituents can affect reactivity. And the first is through inductive effect. So remember, induction occurs through um, sigma bonds. It's the donation or withdrawing of electrons through single or sigma bonds. Uh, the uh, example um, that we're going to see of inductive electron withdrawing groups might be halogens. So just for an example here, halogens. And we'll look at this in more detail as we go through this a little bit more. Um, donating groups, electron donating groups would be um, alkyl groups, for example, right? Like the alkyl group of um, toluene with uh, the methyl there. And then the other thing is resonance effect. So this affects us when we have lone pairs um, as substituents. Right, so it's the formation of pi bonds here. So we'll see situations where we have like a, a ring here and an oxygen, right? So stuff like this, where we can get that additional resonance forming here, right? So with that resonance, that would just give you your carbon with a double bond and a plus charge there. So that's a situation where we gain stability because we, um, we're next to a lone pair bearing atom. So there are going to be three cases that we see here. Those are going to be um, activating, OP directing, deactivating, meta directing, and then a mixture of one and two deactivating but OP directing. Those are the three cases that we're going to see. So we've already seen activating and ortho para directors. So the example that we did um, on our previous lecture was the nitration of toluene. So with toluene, um, we saw that you get that additional resonance structure of a tertiary carbocation. That's the favorable one. That's the additional one that you get that makes that a favorable um, position to react at the ortho and para. So of our alkyl groups, we end up seeing the same situation. It doesn't have to be just a methyl. So here you have an ethyl or brominating. The, the percent of para is a little bit larger because ethyl is a larger group. 
but ortho and para would be your major products here. And again, make a little note here. You get a higher percent because of sterics. Okay. Well, what about substituents with non-bonding electrons? That just means lone pairs. So I just gave you an example of that a couple of minutes ago. Remember we saw carbon with a plus charge on it adjacent to a lone pair bearing atom. And then we said, well, that can occur, giving you an additional resonance structure if this situation were to arise. So I want to look at this example with you guys here. Let's look at um, the, the nitration here of this compound. So before we write out what the products of this is going to be, right, the nitration of anisole, here, let's take a look at the next page and look at what the sigma complexes are going to look like. Right, so as we kind of go through and do that, just to get to those general sigma complexes, remember you're adding this guy, right? So I'll just show you. Right, for the ortho, you would come around here and we would attack here and then do this. So that would give us an ortho and then we can see that just down below here. Right, so there's your nitro group at the ortho position and it would put a plus charge right here. So we're going to do that ortho. We're going to also carry this out um, para. And then we're going to look at meta down below. All right, so let's pull this up and let's take a look here at this little diagram I made. All right, so with ortho, you get a plus charge here. Now, there's lone pairs here. So that's going to give us another resin structure. And here we have a plus charge that went out of the ring. But through resonance, we form this new pi bond up here. And right, so you get your plus charge there. Now, how do we get from this second resonance structure to the third one? Well, we're going to pull these electrons around right up here, just like so, and put that lone pair back on oxygen up at the top. That puts a plus charge right there. And then the last one, we come around and we would do this. What's leaving us with a positive charge here. Okay, so that's ortho. So meta, we're going to have a plus charge down here and our resonance structure comes around gets a plus charge here and then one more positive charge down here on this other carbon now we get three and hopefully you notice here that there's already a difference so at the meta position we never can get that positive charge to be adjacent to the oxygen of that methoxy group so this structure here is an additional resonance structure that we get by nitrating at ortho. And then down here below, we can look at para. So here we have our para substituted sigma complex. Right, coming down here, putting our pi bond over where that plus charge is. And then remember we have our positive charge adjacent now to our oxygen, so we can do this. And so that's going to give us this. And then getting down to that last structure, we're going to simply take these electrons, pull them up just like so, and that gives us our positive charge here. So that guy there is an additional um, resonance structure that, that adds stability and lowers the activation energy of the reactant at this position. So in the end, what we're going to end up getting here for our final product is just going to be ortho and para. So let's take a look at that. Let's fill that in back up at the top here. So for our, our products of this, we're really only going to be getting, right, here's our methoxy group. Uh, we're nitrating, so we get NO2 here, we get this, and then also that guy and a little bit more on the pair position so about 67 percent about 31 
percent. So you don't need to know the percents, but we need to know that those are the two products that form. And also we should know that the, uh, that the para substituted product is more. It's four with more. Well, in fact, the methoxy group is so activating that anisole will react with bromine just by itself without any catalyst. If excess bromine is used, then tribromide is often generated. So here we have bromine, water, anisole, and we have ortho and para, um, both products, uh, I guess both positions formed in um, this one product. What we typically do though is we might use one equivalent so we only um, substitute either an ortho and another product at pair. But anyway, that's kind of a lab idea there. Now, the amino group is another group that has a lone pair bearing atom, right, in a similar fashion. That lone pair of electrons in the group itself causes that NH2 substituent to be a powerful activating group with strong ortho and para directing effects. Right, so um, this, similar to the, the methoxy group, doesn't usually need to have iron tribromide. In fact, if you put FeBr3 in there, it, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but it can complex with the lone pair and the nitrogen, and that can cause the NH2 to become a deactivating group. All right, so with Br2 in here, water and sodium hydrogen carbonate, that's there to neutralize the HBr. Again, because that HBr, and this is important, can also react with the NH2 to form NH3, and that would cause that to be deactivated. Remember, with the NH3, it has a positive charge, and we said positive charges are deactivating. So we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go through some more examples. Um, again, without going out over the entire mechanism and showing all of the sigma complexes, the idea is the same, is that both at ortho and at para, you end up having these additional resonance structures where the positive charge has moved out of the ring. Right? So the additional resonance structures for both the ortho and the para refer to the positive charge moving around um, the, the ring itself. So you end up uh, here, under most situations, getting just the ortho and the para product. So what you would see is something along these lines as far as reactions go. You would see your NH2, and then you would have here your bromine, right, with your NaHCO3 in there. Um, and then you end up forming NH2 with uh, your bromo group here. And also a bromo group down here. So nitrating this is a little bit trickier because if you try to nitrate this, you're adding an acid, and the acid will cause that um, that nitrogen again to be deactivated. So there's some things that you have to do to protect that nitrogen before you go through and carry out that reaction. And again, that's something that we'll take a look at as we progress more through um, the semester. Right, so let's take a look at our little summary here of our activating groups. So strongest over here on the left. So phenoxide has a negative charge, so it's uh, strongly electron donating. Uh, you have a lone, then you have lone pair bearing atoms, nitrogen, right, and oxygen. So uh, next comes your alkoxy groups in here, and then you have your amide groups. And that, even though that has a lone pair on it, it's in resonance over on this side a little bit, right through the lone uh, pair of the oxygen, kind of moving up that direction. So, right, what that does in essence is it causes that lone pair to be a little bit less readily available as compared to um, just an amine by itself. And then you have an alkyl group down here at the end.